If you want to consider a genocide as a systematic killing of a group of people, they have genocide built into Sharia law right now. So no, I'm not going to cry a fucking river when people who have genocide that's baked into their laws are getting genocided. I don't give a fuck. They're terrible people. It's not even a question. It's crazy that people don't see it that way. They'd be doing the same thing. Mm. How much did they kill? As many as they can. They're not able to kill as many people as Israel because they don't have as many bombs and as many weapons. But if they did, they'd be doing the same thing. That's it. Just takes enough. That's right. These people are not your allies. They are not the same as us. They come from an inferior culture that is horrible. It kills people for their identity and it is directly antithetical to everything Western values stand for. And it is an inferior culture in all ways. It is that simple. No, I don't feel bad for them. I don't feel sorry for them. I don't care. I don't support them. Yo, did y'all hear about this? So, 1.2 million views already in seven hours. You know, people love an apology video. Huh? Isn't that, I, I feel like an apology video is like a rite of passage in the YouTube community. If you are a YouTuber, like it's like you're not big until you gotta do an apology video. That's when you know you're big. <laughs> That's when you know you've been you've been moving and shaking some things on YouTube. You know when you gotta do an apology video. That's how you know you've been you know you've been top dogging it. You've been top dogging it. All right, let's see what's going on here with Asman. Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you all about what my reason was for getting suspended on Twitch and also what my plans are going forward. I'm going to try and structure this video into two parts where the first part is going to be me talking about the Twitch suspension, second part is going to be talking about myself. And the first thing I want to start off with is something that um, I know it might sound a little bit insincere because of how ridiculous this is, but I really mean it and if you listen to the whole video, I hope you can see why. Everybody who Oh, he's wearing a no rest for the wicked hoodie. Yo, I was looking at that game. That game actually looked pretty cool. Um, I didn't try it. I was hearing that it, it still needed some work. Um, I'm probably gonna eventually try it, but I just noticed that he's wearing the, the hoodie. He was come and spoken out and talked to me and said stuff about me. Uh, you know, aside from the, oh, you should kill yourself or something like that, uh, I wanna say <laughs> that I really appreciate you. And I think this has been something that's a long time coming. And I actually think that this is something that not only I deserved, but it's also something that I needed. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about what the reason for that is, but I want to start off and just make sure that that's actually very clear. Uh, so a couple of days ago, I made some comments about Palestine and also about Hamas and, you know, some just general, uh, you know, basically opinions that were trivializing the genocide that's happening there. And I, I don't really want to like mince words or like try to like, oh, I wasn't justifying or, you know, promoting it. Uh, I, I said something about it that was disgusting. Uh, I mean, one thing I learned <laughs> is that you playing around with politics and playing around with like religion. Like when I, when I go on dates, I mean, when I first started like really getting into dating, I knew some of the tips that I was getting was on your first date, don't talk about politics, don't talk about religion, because those are two quick ways to get into a, a debate that can lead to some uncomfortable things being said, some disagreements that, you know, the person that you might be talking to might not be able to get over, and they might look at you in a bad light because of something that you might have said that may have came off insensitive. So... I mean, obviously the internet is even bigger than just a blind, just a date, a first date, because you're not dealing with just one person, you're dealing with the world, basically. So, ugh, messing around with that. And, and they going to war right now, too? Ugh. <laughs> yeah, you don't, don't want to dig into that. You don't want to dig into that right there. I said that I didn't care about innocent people getting killed by another force, by anything. And I think that that's a horrible 
disgusting, mean-spirited thing to say. Mm. And I, I don't necessarily think that it was really racist, really. But when I'm using language like Palestinians or like the people there, rather than what my real language was, uh, I've always been very outspoken and very against religious extremism. And I still am. I think that any religion and any way of thinking that's going to cause you to put other people in like kind of positions below you as like, you know, like uh, gay people, women, uh, people with disabilities, anything like that. Uh, I think that that's a really bad position to have and I really don't like that. And I think that my problem and my fault here was that I was making a criticism of religious extremism and I made no effort. And I, I feel like almost, I've rewatched the clip, right? Or a number of the clips. And it's like, I've almost made an effort not to draw a distinction between the two things. I think that a lot of us here can easily say that we're against religious extremism. And I am. But whenever I categorize everybody in the area as this like group, uh, then I'm the asshole. And I was the asshole. I had a lot of you guys tell me that. And it's taken me, this is what's so crazy about it, is that I think this has been going on now for like two years. I think that I've been slowly devolving into the most mean-spirited, uh, just uh, like, like, I don't really even know what the word is for it. Uh, just like the most mean-spirited, rude, like nasty, uh, like just callous, a psychopathic version of myself. I, I think that I've been devolving into this. And a lot of my friends have told me this. My dad has told me this. He said, you've got to chill out. You've got to calm down. Mm. I've been like, oh, he, he's, that old man doesn't know what he's talking about. And I have finally had some level of accountability for that. And thank God. I, I look back. <laughs> Yo, I'm not gonna lie. It's always funny for me when I hear someone who like claims to be like an atheist or something like that, and then hear them say things like "Thank God" or "Jesus Christ." <laughs> I just find that to be so funny every time I hear that, cause it's like, bro, like <laughs> it just lets you know that some people did just say things. Uh, it's a form of expression that they just grow up hearing and it's just a part of their vocabulary and whether they really like mean like what the meaning of it is like usually like the meaning of it it doesn't they're not saying it for the meaning of it it's, they're saying it for the expression like holy shit like Jesus Christ holy shit you know what I mean like they're just saying stuff cause it's just it's just like muscle memory like you just say it it's just a reaction now like ouch Oh man, that's just so funny to hear that. He said, "Thank God." After saying like he's like an, you know, I heard him say he's an atheist before and all this extra stuff. That's funny. At some of the things that I've said and done over the past two years, and I don't think that I've been wrong about everything, obviously, right? But there have been ways that I've communicated and ways that I've acted that are indefensible, and I think it's looking back on it, it's just mm. disgusting. And it's something that when you get lost in the sauce and you get fixated around like listening and reading feedback and, you know, just getting hyper fixated, this is like your entire life, you lose a perspective on reality and you lose a perspective on the world. And I think that that perspective was brought into perspective yesterday and the day before um, when I, I was making comments like this. and. Uh, I, I feel I, I feel so stupid. I, I, it's crazy. So I, I'm getting all these people making negative comments toward me. Everybody is telling me like, oh, go kill yourself. I hate you. Everything like this. Okay. Normal stuff. Normal stuff. Do you know who reached out to me? And uh, they uh, wanted to talk and have a conversation and see if I was okay. It's people that were Islamic and people that were had fucking family in Palestine. And I... How humiliating is that? How absolutely humiliating is that? And these were the people I was trying to say were, were, were bad. And mm. I I just, I, I feel like such a fucking stupid asshole. I really do. Um, 
I've always been a, uh, you know, I, I guess like I've always been kind of like an atheist. And um, uh, even as, as a young kid, I was raised Roman Catholic and I was always very defiant towards it. And um, I've always had a negative opinion of religion and I've also had a negative opinion of religious cultures. And I, I think that really, I think that opinion is definitely shaped by the media that I've created and the media I've created for myself and then also just the media that exists, the media that I've chose to seek out as well. And I think that that media has allowed me to have certain uh, predispositions and certain biases that um, the, the truth is that don't have any sort of relation to what my own real life has been experienced. Or my Ooh, that... I like what he said there. That is so true. Like, the type of content that you consume, it can create a bias towards certain things that you may not have experienced yourself to create that bias from within. Like, you can just... You're getting secondary bias. <laughs> based on the content that you're consuming if you like for example if you're watching a bunch of content where it's showing like like i don't know black people in, Sh in chicago killing each other all the time then you just don't think like wow like black people are just violent and in your own area you might not have experienced people that were black that may have been mean towards you or even try to rob you or harm you in any in any type of way but because you you see it all the time on the internet possibly you might just start thinking that oh shoot i should probably i should probably be concerned so many black people in this area i it's probably not safe to be over here you might start have like a weird negative bias towards towards that due to what you're consuming on the internet so it's not like he's basically saying that he's been consuming things that made i guess islamic people or at least the, the religion seem as if it's part of the problem and i can see that because remember back when um 20 i'm saying 20 2001 i believe 9 11 when that happened i mean when that happened i mean ask anybody who was at least a teenager that was middle eastern around that time like they were looked at as the ops when that whole thing happened. You know what I mean? Like they're here already, they're just living their life, but because they look like the people that did, or at least the people that they said did it, you know what I mean? I don't know, I wasn't there, right? But because they look like the people that that were said to have done the, the hijacking of the planes and all that, it's like, hey, you're part of them. That's how Americans were looking at them. So people were getting treated harshly you know because of that you know because of what was said on the news and some people might call it propaganda propaganda or whatever but yeah people ha may not have had an instance with middle eastern people directly like oh i never had a middle eastern person tell me something or do something to me that harmed me whether physically or emotionally but from what i'm seeing on the news they're telling me that these people are bad so now when i see them i'm like I mean, that person always been nice to me, but I mean, how nice are they really if that's what their people is doing? You know what I mean? So it's like secondary bias. So that was very, very important what you said. That was actually a really good point what you said. I actually want to hear him say it again just to run that in. Media has allowed me to have certain uh, predispositions and certain biases that um, the, the truth is that don't have any sort of relation to what my own real life has been experienced or my own real life experience has been excuse me and so yeah, that's, I, that's true. I've been spending a lot of time talking to those people and I've seen people like fans of mine like I had viewers messaging me on discord like you know why, why are you saying this like do you want to talk do you want to like you know I'm, I'm willing to talk to you and like you know like let, let's try to work this out right we love you and I scrolled up on their messages and, and these are people that messaged me in like 2016, 2017, 2018. Like, I love your content. Okay, so they've been stream. around. I love you. They've been around. Right? And, and now they get to hear this from me. And I just feel like such a stupid, belligerent fucking asshole. I really do. And I'm sorry. I, I really am. I, I think that it's extremely fair to criticize uh, religious extremism. And I think that it's extremely unfair to categorize everybody in part of that group as religious extremists. I think it is, and I'm, I'm really sorry for that. Uh, I've just been a fucking dick. And I, 
it, it's weird because I yesterday I woke up and I didn't know if I was going to get suspended or not and I planned on streaming and everything and uh, I actually got a text message from one of my mods they said oh I heard about the suspension I'm sorry and I was like I remember I was like driving and like you know you'd think that like your heart rate would go up but if anything I felt more relaxed I felt like finally I have a moment to just take a step back and breathe and think for myself and just stop just like get out get out of my own head and I spent a long time like just writing basically a list of all of these things that like I I think that I should be doing with my life and this is gonna be kind of the second part by the way of the video uh, comments that I made uh, were pretty much about religious extremism I think it's bad uh, but I've categorized a lot of people in that way that was unfair it's wrong for me to have done that uh, I said something that was bad, I should not have said that, I should have chosen my words more carefully, I didn't do that, I doubled down on it, I shouldn't have, I'm sorry. That's pretty much, I was a fucking asshole, I'm a piece of shit, I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. And so, actually I do know what else to say. I, I don't like making apologies, because I think words don't matter. Um, but I do think changed actions and changed behaviors do. Okay, okay, so you okay. So take my apology as hopefully better content. And if you're not seeing that, I want you to hold me accountable. Hopefully this time I won't be stupid enough to ignore it. <laughs> no, I feel the same way about words, bro. Like, I, I want to see no, it. I don't want to hear it. Anyway, so the second part about this is that I want to talk a little bit about like my life, my personal life, etc. And kind of some of the points that I think that I've I've kind of gone through to get here. Mm -hmm. uh, so the main thing is that for the past, like, I would say like 10 years or so, uh, if you look at my life like this, I would have said 10 years ago or maybe eight years ago, streaming was like this, right? YouTube was like this. And now I would say that my life and streaming are basically the exact same size. And what I mean by that is that streaming is my entire life. Doing this is my entire existence. And I think that the process of that has been extremely unhealthy for me. And I think that what it's done is that it's allowed me to become such a one-dimensional person that I'm not even a person anymore. It's like I'm in Dark Souls, I'm going hollow or something. And I think about like all of the, you know, like I, I made a list of all of the things that I'm not doing in my life that I should be doing. And I was writing it down and I'm like, you know, fucking like, I'm just going and going, going. I'm like, oh my God, I think it'd be shorter if I transcribed the Bible. Like, this is insane. Like, I'm like, whenever I have everything written down line for line, it's like, oh my God, I'm ruining my life. I've been existing and I want to at a certain point actually try to live my life mm. and I don't think that I've been doing that and so what am I going to do how am I going to do that differently and what does that mean for for my stream etc I think that I'm going to cut down a little bit on streaming quite as much okay and I think I'm also going to cut down <clears throat> this is going to sound like I, I I I hope I can say this in the right way I feel like the main times that I laugh on my stream nowadays are when I'm laughing at other people. And I look back on videos that I did from 2020, 2016, and 17, and yeah, I've always been an asshole, but holy shit, I've been way more of an asshole. It is, it's insane. And it's a night and day difference. And I've had, again, everybody in the world telling me this, including my own dad, and I've just ignored them. Wait, and... You know what's so funny about that? Because I heard that, um... I heard that if you're a good person or or a asshole, whatever the case is, when you're broke, then if you become rich, you're just gonna be a bigger version of whatever you were when you were broke. <clears throat> so I just find it kind of funny that he said that. Now I'm not saying that money has anything to do with him becoming a bigger asshole, but. I just remember hearing that, hearing somebody say that before, and it's just funny that he said it, because obviously whatever he was doing 10 years ago, um, I doubt he was earning as much as he's earning now. I don't know if he was broke 10 years ago, but I doubt he was earning what he's earning now, clearly, right? So that's, that's kind of funny that I heard that, you know? Finally, it's like, you know what? <laughs> Maybe I'm an asshole. Maybe maybe this is too far. Maybe I need a, a, a course correction. 
Which is why I'm, I think that, like, getting suspended in this, uh, I hope that it's one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Okay. And I don't know whether that's going to be true, but I'm going to try to do things differently and make sure to live up to that reality. Hmm. And so, uh, what are those things that I'm going to be doing differently? Yeah. Um, the first thing is that I think I'm going to try. I've been very much trying to, like, maintain a consistent schedule with my stream. And I will continue to do that. Uh, I want to get up and go to bed at relatively the same time. I want to live a normal life. And also, I want to spend maybe a little bit less time streaming. And I want to spend more time creating my own videos and doing my own things. And spending time on things that I really enjoy. And basically, just like expanding my existence as a person. I think that ever since I started like OTK and I got involved with that. And then we had like other... Starforge and like Mad Mushroom and, and Mythic and everything like I honestly it's been too much for me to handle mm. uh, it's been, com been completely too much for me to handle and it, I, I've I've been losing my mind dealing mm. with it and I try to hide it the best I can because you know I, I try to do the best right I try to do my best I, I you know it doesn't matter how hard it gets you just keep going you just keep going it doesn't matter and eventually it does matter mm. and I think that I've negatively affected a lot of them and I also don't want to talk about that just in the context of just like this recent controversy. Uh, I want to talk about this in the context of the last two years. I think that I haven't really been able to fulfill my responsibilities as uh, a leader in a lot of cases to them. And I think that I've let a lot of people down. Uh, and there have been things that I've done that are positive as well. But I think that one thing this thing has taught me, this whole situation has taught me, it's made me realize, as Tom has made me realize, is that... Um, I need to get myself in check. I need to. Yeah, you know what's so crazy? <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna try to stop pausing it so much. Let the video end after this. But it's like he was forced to to basically take a break because of what he said. I believe the suspension is for about like two weeks. I think it's like a 14 day suspension, like two weeks or something like that. Which is not that bad. It's like a, like a little vacation, basically, right? Um, and Aspen been posting like he been he was farming, bro. Like I don't catch every video, but I can see his uploads. Ho homie been farming. <laughs> He's uploading like f like five videos a day on average, like. And he has a nice little setup, nice little system, nice little formula. Obviously, he does his streams on Twitch and then whatever clips from his stream he, he uploads it on to YouTube so obviously he spent a lot of time like six seven hours probably on average streaming on Twitch and he's doing that every day he's like doing that like every day like every day I'm seeing uploads from him so the fact that he said that he's been going ham and you feel like he's just in his own little bubble he's kind of like he's not feeling like human anymore he's like doing things that's like when he looks back on it, it's like damn i'm disgusted with the fact that i haven't said something like that or acted like that or thought that and now he has the time to kind of like reflect because he can't stream he's forced to basically sit there with himself basically and he can't like really do anything really he's like i mean he could probably post on youtube but I mean, his content is more like streaming, you know, that's more of his thing. And then YouTube is just the clips. But ultimately right now he has this moment of time to kind of reflect, like now it's like a, it's like a kind of like silence. And when this, you just left with your thoughts, you start to really think about things that you didn't think you had the time to think about before that you never really, cause you was just always going, going, going. So it's like, like he said, he thinks, He's hoping this could be a like a blessing in disguise. Like this could be a really good thing for him, this little break to kind of figure out his life. Cause now that the fucking car broke down and the car's in the shop now, now he's like, he has to figure out like, where the hell was that car even taking me? Where was I going with that? I was just going. Like, like I need to figure out what's going on, like my next move right now, you know? Cause I mean, I mean, He's doing great with the streaming and stuff, but like, are you are you happy like outside of that? You know what I mean? Like, are you happy outside of that? 
I don't know what his goals are personally, like his personal goals, if he wants to have a family, if he wants to travel the world. I mean, because he's making all this money. But, I mean, like, are you enjoying it? Are you treating yourself? Are you taking care of yourself? You know? Like, physically, mentally? So these are the things that I think he's going to have the opportunity to actually, like, focus on for this next week and a half, I guess, that's left of this break that he's on. You know? So this could be a good thing for him. Might see a, a different side of Asmin. He might stream less. Might upload maybe three videos a day, maybe. But if he might have some time to actually add on to his life, like add something that could be beneficial for him. So who knows, you know? To get my mind under control, I need to like just get my life to, I need to fix my fucking life. Like it, it's, it's insane. Like I, I think about it and it's just, it's in shambles. Uh, everything about my life is basically fucked. And I'm gonna take a step right. back from all of that. I'm gonna step away from my leadership position and OTK and Starforge and everything. I, I wanna, and, and they're fine with that. They respect that and I, I wanna do this. And I wanna do this not only for them, but mainly for myself. So I can be a better version of myself for everyone. And I wanna apologize to all you guys, my viewers, that I, I don't think I've lived up to that. I think that I can be a lot better than what I am right now. And I don't even think that I've been putting in half the effort that I should be in the way that I should be. And I'm sorry. Okay, okay. And so my plan is to, when I get unbound, uh, I'll keep streaming regularly, right? Um, and I, I want to focus more on trying to do things that are fun, trying to laugh more with people rather than af at people. I'll still laugh at people every once in a while, okay? Like, let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Um, but it's about a focus, and it's about a um, it's about a tone. I listen to my tone in the clip, and I just sound like such a piece of shit. Hmm. Really, at the end of the day, I sound like a piece of shit. I sound like a terrible person, and it's just so mean spirited and, and callous and just mean. And I don't want to be that person anymore. And uh, I've. I've spent a long time growing up, uh, the time I did, I was an r slash atheism enjoyer. I have a very uh, negative opinion of a lot of religions. Uh, I've had the experience firsthand of the negative effects of Christianity and, uh, you know, the way that I, I view that. And I've always read a lot of very bad things about Islam. Uh, and I've made a lot of criticisms of it. I've talked to a lot of people about it. I've heard a lot about it. And I, I've, I've been like watching things about it and I, I've been like hearing people telling me this is the way it is, but- Wait, hold on, R real quick. So I, I think I just found a clip of Asman, I guess whatever he said that, uh, that may have gotten him banned. Hold up, let me see if I can, that's what, cause I, I don't know what clip it is. So let me see if I can, if this is it right here I think this might be it if you want to consider a genocide as a systematic killing of a group of people they have genocide built into Sharia law right now so no I'm not going to cry a fucking river when people who have genocide that's baked into their laws are getting genocided I don't give a fuck they're terrible people it's not even a question. It's crazy that people don't see it that way. They'd be doing the same thing. Mm. How much did they kill? As many as they can. They're not able to kill as many people as Israel because they don't have as many bombs and as many weapons. But if they did, they'd be doing the same thing. That's it, just takes enough, that's right. These people are not your allies. They are not the same as us. They come from an inferior culture that is horrible. It kills people for their identity and it is directly antithetical to everything Western values stand for. And it is an inferior culture in all ways. It is that simple. No, I don't feel bad for them. I don't feel sorry for them. I don't care. I don't support them. 
Now, now this is just a clip. I, I don't know the entire context of what led to him talking about this, but I mean the clip. The clip itself sounds bad by uh oh by itself. Like, and I, I see the tone that he was talking about that uh, that he wasn't happy with when he looked back on it. But it looked like he was talking about some Japanese stuff, and then I guess somehow he related that to the Gaza situation. But anyway, so that's I guess that's the clip. I've never seen it. And I actually think that at, after all this, I think towards the end of next year, I think I'd like to visit the Middle East and see it for myself. I, I want to see it for a historical perspective, right? I would love to go to Istanbul in Turkey. Um, there's no uh, no ulterior motive there at all. Um, but it's not just that. I'd, I'd love to pl visit places like Saudi Arabia, Dubai, any of the other places. I mean, the truth is that, and this is the worst thing about what I said, um, some of the places that I would want to visit, I might not be able to because of the way that they're like just the internal strife, the actual literal wars that are going on, people being literally killed uh, there, and, and I might not be able to do that. But I, I, I want to do it and I want to see it for myself because I, I don't like believing what people tell me. And I think that when I do, I end up being a fool. And I want to see it. I want to see it for myself and I want to experience it. And I want to live my life. And I, I'm going to try to like, I don't know, like clean up part of my house. I'm going to try to do this. And, and I'm not going to hire a cleaner. As I said, I was raised Roman Catholic. I view this as a penance. And I, I think I need to. Wait, is he saying that he re he views a cleaning his house like a, like a, kind of like a, like like a dis like a disciplinary action? <laughs> for myself, I need to take accountability for bad things that I've done, and for letting my wife get this out of control. And I don't need to get out of jail free card. Okay. So I need to do that for myself, and for my own closure as well. And I think also. I want to live for the the, <laughs> the the idiots out there that you know they're uh, you know like looking to me to be a role model, right? Oh, not a good idea. But um, there are people that will see that and um, they'll think maybe to themselves, maybe I should do the same thing. And if I can do that for one person, um, well, I've already done it for myself. I've already done a good thing, and so it could only get better. And so that's what my plan is. I'm going. I'm going to try to like rethink my life. I have had a lot of people reach out to me. People I would have never expected to reach out to me in ways that I never expected. And I understand that, you know, like, I, I, I'm, I'm still very critical about, you know, religious fundamentalism, right? But when you paint with such a broad brush that you just include an entire group of people, you're not, you're just being a fucking ass. You're being a piece of shit. It's like people said it was racist. I didn't mean it as racist, but if you listen to what I said, it's easy that you could assume that so easy and so i'm i'm just a fucking idiot i'm a fucking moron i've been an asshole i think that i've devolved for the last two years i think that i've negatively affected other people too in ways that i i i, I hate I, I i don't even hate to say this like I, I think i need to say this i need to say it more i i've, I've negatively affected people in ways that i regret yeah. i think whenever i go back live again i'll probably talk about that more and you know like there's some just different people i kind of want to apologize to and you know take accountability for things that i've said and and done that have negatively affected other people in ways that were unfair and wrong. Mm. And um, that's what my plan is. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I wanna say that I, I hope that now, after you've heard what I have to say, that a lot of you all can see kind of why I'm saying that I appreciate this. I'm, I really think that this is something I needed. And I hope that this is the next part of the rest of my life. And I want you guys to hold me accountable to that. So if I'm being a fucking asshole again, if I'm being mean, if I'm just being callous, acting like a psychopath, just treating people awfully outside of a WoW raid when they get killed by fire, but really um, laughing at people's misfortune, try to say, man, just chill the fuck out. Stop it. What's, just stop. And I'm going to do my best to listen. I spent two years ignoring it, and look where it got me. This is not even the tip of the iceberg of the problems in my life. And, uh, 
I, I want to thank everybody for making me aware that that's the case. And hopefully I can avoid the iceberg, right? And so I want to say uh, that's pretty much about all I've got. Uh, I sorry for a lot of people I let down, uh, not just with comments like this, but also just with the way I've been doing things in general. I think that you guys deserve a much better version of me than what you've been getting. And I hope that I can live up to that in the future. And uh, I, I don't I don't even want to think about it in the future, right? As soon as I get unbanned, we're gonna, I'm, the best apology is better content, change behavior. And that's what I hope to do. So yeah, anyway guys, um, I'm just gonna focus on myself for a while, try to improve my own life. And uh, there's a lot of things I, I think, again, I'll probably talk about more whenever I go live again, that are like more kind of, uh, you know, just like kind of in the weeds, like personal stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, overall, that's the big picture. That's where I'm at. And so uh, anyway, uh, that's about all I've got. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. I'm gonna try to just take this time off to, uh, you know, really kind of fix my shit. So yeah, anyway guys, that's about it. I'll see you later, bye. Okay, all right, cool. I'm gonna let it fully finish out. All right, cool. <laughs> I don't wanna have that freeze frame there. But, um, I mean, as far as what, what he was saying, his like apology, I, I love the fact that um, he, he manned up and apologized for it and said, like, listen, I feel terrible about it. I look back at it and I realized that, yeah, I didn't sound like someone I would like to sound like. You know? And um, I think that's really um, adulting, <laughs> right? I know that's not the way you want to use that word, but that's just, I'm just saying, like, that's an adult way to go about it. Um, and unfortunately, like, he mentioned something about you know, being a role model. Like he mentioned something about being a role model and like having people like look up to him and he's like yeah like you don't want to do that it's a bad idea but unfortunately when you start doing the type of work to have you out like out in the open kind of like a public figure in a sense even being a a content creator like there's people that might be aspiring content creators in their own right maybe not in the same lane but they might want to go and thrive in, in a content creation type of genre. And they might look at you and look at how you've grown. And that might be inspiring to them. That might be something that makes them feel like, hey, if he can do it, look at how he was raised and what his upbringing was, was basically looking like. And it's either similar to mine or worse than mine. So if he can do it, I can do it, right? So just by default, people will just look at you as a role model and you may not have came into the game to be a role model. You're just a guy doing doing whatever you do. And you may not have asked for this, but because of the, the masses that you, as far as attention that you garnished from the masses, like you just happen to be put into that position where it's like you have to be careful with what you do because now you have an audience and now you are affecting people and so now because you have this power you have responsibility that you didn't ask for so i mean it sucks that that comes with the game of being like a a content creator like whether you're a content creator or not if you have the ears and the eyes of like millions or even thousands or hundreds of thousands or whatever you want to call it once you have that attention it's like now it's like <laughs> now you have responsibility you know what i mean so is this is this something that comes with it right i don't even know if that's the point i was trying to get to i'm kind of tired <sighs> i'm sleepy <laughs> but i hope that made sense um but yeah man i I don't think I don't think he was bullshitting with anything that he was saying in that video. I think he was um true to his to his words as far as how he felt about what happened. And also there's a moment, um, I don't know if you noticed there was a moment like early on, like when he was like talking They uh wanted to talk and have hear. a conversation and see if I was okay. Do you know who reached out to me? Yeah, this part right and, here. Uh, 
they uh, wanted to talk and have a conversation and see if I was okay. Like this part right here, like, I mean, I've never heard him get emotional, so I can't, I don't have any anything to reference. But I'm not gonna lie, that part right there, it felt like something inside hit him when he thought about the people that reached out to him that were actually directly affected not only by his words but by what is actually happening over there in that war with where the people are getting like desecrated you know what i mean like they have family members that still live over there and they're like concerned about their well-being every single minute and i guess that's what he's referring to and i guess that whatever conversation he may have had or maybe it wasn't conversation maybe it was just comments that was enough to strike a chord that's what it looked like in that little section where he said, and you know who reached out? And he's thinking like, yo, these people who should be fucking pissed and hate my guts because of what I was saying, that it, it relates to them. Like they're, they're living this. And they were willing to come to me with like love to like get me to like fix my, my point of view towards that. And that's the side, if I'm not mistaken, I would say that's the side of the religion that most people are not seeing being expressed in the media. People are seeing more of like, oh, the extremist stuff, and look what they're doing. Their religion is about war and all. Like, that's what people are exposed to. But if I'm not mistaken, like the, the, the Islam like religion, like that stuff is it's about peace. Like that peace be upon you or whatever the case is, like the, you know what I mean. Like, so it's like it's it's, it's, a, it's supposed to be a very peaceful religion, from what I've come to come to learn. And I guess he just experienced that after he made those comments. He had people like who was probably American who was probably hating on him, and then the people who were actually affected really by what he was saying, they came to him with love to fix to to help correct them. And they care. They showed, they showed care. And I think that's what got him to feel like, shit, man, what the f I can't believe I said all that crazy stuff, saying that they all lumped into this crazy stuff. And then look how they come and show me love. And they they, they really want, they want they want to make sure I'm okay. And it's like, damn, like, that make, that'll make you feel even more shitty. Because, like, damn, I was shitting on you and not even knowing who you are. And you're showing me this kind of love, and now you're just proving me wrong. You know? That's crazy. You know how they say, kill him with kindness? <laughs> Yo. So, that little moment right there, it felt like he felt like an emotional hit, thinking about the people that reached out. And that that's, you know, I think that's powerful enough to make anybody, you know, rethink, you know? So, hey man, this might be a good thing for him, you know? I mean, he has been farming, like I said, so now he's going to be able to take a two-week little break, and maybe he'll come back stronger, or maybe he'll figure out what he wants to do with the rest of his life, um, if he doesn't want to stream as much um, as he does now, and, you know, he could, like he said, he, could, he said he has a bunch of stuff going on, he says life is crazy right now, like, his life is, he says life is fucked right now, I don't know what that means exactly, you know, because you'll think like, and it's so crazy because you'll think like, all right, yo, this guy, he's doing what he loves to do. He's streaming. He's um, commenting on videos that he probably would watch even if he wasn't streaming. And then on top of that, he's playing video games, which he probably would be playing if he wasn't streaming. But now he's streaming and he gets paid to do it. So you'll think like, damn, this nigga's living like the, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm, I'm not going to say American dream. He's just living the dream. You know, for people who just want to do what they love, right? Doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily have to be gaming. Whatever you love to do, if you're making, like, I don't know how many. I don't, I'm not pocket watching, but if he's making hundreds of thousands or even millions, I mean, doing something that you would that you would do if you if you wasn't making money doing, right? Something you would do offline that you do already, but now you're making money doing it and you're making like millions doing it. People would think, hey, this guy's living the fucking dream. So how, how's your life? How's your life fucked? If you're living the dream, like you should be happy, right? 
So I don't know what it is that he's not happy with. I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's lonely. I don't know if he, I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? And when I say lonely, it doesn't necessarily mean like, um, like he needs a girlfriend. He could just be lonely with like, just family, friends, real friends. Maybe he have industry friends, like streamer friends, but maybe like real friends. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have real friends like that around him possibly that he can just go hang out with in person who knows maybe he doesn't have a lot of family members his mom passed away his dad is like cool seems like a cool dude but his, you know but his dad is like that's one guy i don't know if he has cousins i don't know if you know i don't know if he has a brother or sister i don't really know much about asthma but i don't know he could be lonely for all we know you know what i mean um, i believe he's single so it's just like I mean, you can be making all the money in the world, but you still got to take care of yourself, you know? You got to have, you like, your, your whole world can't be on the internet, basically. So, it's this, I hope whatever he needs to do, I hope he, he gets to do that. And, because I've seen plenty of his videos to, to, to know, like, not only is he, like, a smart guy, I think he's a smart guy as far as, like, he's very good at articulating his words. He can, he's a very good communicator. Um, I don't think he's an evil guy. I know he said he's done. He said some crazy shit or whatever, some insensitive stuff. But um, I don't think he means wrong. You know what I mean? I don't think he's des like deliberately trying to like be a fucking asshole. I think he's just something that he just kind of turned into without realizing it. And then that's why when he looked back at it, he's thinking like, "Damn, what the what the hell did I become?" And he's disgusted with it. Now, to play devil's advocate, some people might say, oh, well, maybe he only looked back at it and is disgusted with it because he got, you know, he got he got hit with a, with a he got hit with a, um, what do you call it? Not, he didn't get banned, but he got hit with a damn, uh, damn suspension. Maybe that's what it is. That's why you feel... I mean, you could probably argue that, but I mean, I guess you'll fully know depending on how he comes back, right? So, but I, I don't think it's because of the suspension. I think, I think the suspension woke him up. <laughs> I think that, I think that shit woke him up. Like, oh shit, what the? I, oh, I've been wilding, but I don't know. But yeah, I think that I think that was a decent uh, apology or whatever he has to say i think that was clear clear message and i think yeah he does have to do something with his life outside of the streaming because i remember he had another video where it looked just like this I, I remember i seen that video that video was like probably like a few weeks ago probably like a week or two ago it's just like this and he was just explaining hey this is why i'm like this and when he was talking about stuff in that video, I'm like, okay. He had some health issue or health risk within the past month or two. So, yeah, you got to you gotta take care of yourself, Asman. Take care of yourself, bro. You know? You, overall, I think, you, I think you're a good dude overall, but you got to take care of yourself, you know? And I'm not going to lie. Life is hard. Trying to... Sometimes the internet could be a good escape, but, I mean, you, you don't want to go through life... At the end of it, and, and think it to yourself when you get to that to the end of the road, like damn, did I do the things that I wanted to do? Yeah. yeah. If you have enough money to really live, live, bro. That's what I'm saying. All right, let me cut it off, man. Let me let me let that let me let that go. But that was a good video, man. I, I'm glad. I mean, if I if I'm hitting a like. Am I am I am I hitting a like that I approve this message, or am I hitting a like that I like the fact that he, he's suffering? Like I don't know what are these likes? Are these likes for like yeah, yeah you suffering piece of shit? Like the people that don't like him, <laughs> or is it like yeah you know I agree with this message man. I'm glad that you are coming to your senses. But you know what? I'm gonna like the video because I like the fact that he owned up to it realize where he where he fucked up at and he has a plan of, of of action he have a plan to correct himself so that's what this like is for so
so all right so i guess it's gonna be kind of quiet as far as asmin goes it's gonna be quiet for him for the next week <laughs>